Welcome back to Switch to Linux and another edition of Distro Wars. And this was a supporter requested comparison, Zorin versus Solace. And we want to have a look at these. And uh, there's actually a lot. I, I'm fairly familiar with both of these platforms. And so I have a fair amount I can say about each one of them. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, get diving on into these. Let's first start by having a look at their individual websites. So Zorin itself is really billed as an easy distro for beginners. They have anything from tablet modes. They have a Redmond mode. They have you know, a Mac type mode. You can purchase more themes and packages pre-installed with the Zorin. I think it's called the Zorin Ultimate. You can also download the basic Zorin, the Zorin Core, and that ships with the GNOME desktop environment, but it's a highly customized GNOME. It's not like the vanilla GNOME that just looks like GNOME. It's, it's highly, highly customized. They did an excellent job with it. The other thing is that if you do have a lower end computer. They do have a light edition, which is based on XFCE. Again, it is a very nice, uh, very nice job. Now, there was a little bit of Zorin where uh, a little bit of a controversy a while ago, myself and a few others pointed it out and Zorin has rectified the issue. And that is that they did have a Zorin census, which would ping, I think if I remember correctly, I think it was like once an hour and it would ping that and maybe a few, uh, the number of users on the computer would ping back and that actually was a little bit controversial so they have now included an opt out on the install so you can deselect that and not participate in the Zorin census now so um, in response to those of us who had made concerns about that that is now rectified head on up to the download button at the top of the website. We do have the full version for $40 US. This comes with a lot of other themes, a lot of other layouts, and some extra software. We do have the Core Essentials, which is free. You don't need to pay anything for that. Also built on GNOME, and then we also have the Zorin Lite, which is for your older computer, and again, this is built on XFCE. So one of the Betas, uh, best aspects of Zorin is how easy it is to use. They do have the theming and accent colors that allows you to set up your system the way that you would like. This is based on Ubuntu, and so it has a much wider package base of applications to install. It does include snap packages out of the box. Uh, I think Flatpak is... I think Flatpak is available to install, but I don't remember it being installed um, out of the box. The other distro we're going to be comparing this to is Solace. So Solace created the Budgie desktop, which in my opinion is GNOME done right. It's a very nice... Uh, very nice build of GNOME. It's not as highly customizable as several other desktops are, so you're not going to be able to get in there and make it completely your own, although you can change between light, light themes, dark themes. There are a few other themes that you can use and set up. Solace is also available in GNOME, not the customized GNOME that Zorin has, but in the stock GNOME. We also have a Mate and a Plasma edition as well. Unlike Zorin, Solace is based on its own Linux build, so it's not based on Ubuntu or Debian or Arch or anything like that. It is its own thing. As as it has its own package manager, its own customs and, and customizations and features. This provides with it a an upside that all of the packages work very very well with it, but the downside is that the number of packages is highly limited. It does have snaps and flat packs available, however, so you can actually produce a good system with what you want with both snaps and flat packs. So that is really what Solace is all about. Let's go ahead and uh, jump on in, and we are going to start by looking over at Zorin. And one of the best things here about Zorin is as it logs in, it just looks really nice from the from the startup to the to the final shutdown. We get our nice Zorin, uh, our nice Zorin screen there. It hides all that scary Linuxy looking stuff when a computer usually boots up, and then it's going to bring us right into the login screen, and uh, we'll wait for that to show up. So here is our Zorin login screen. And uh, we just kind of click in on our username here and we can come in here and choose the, the basic desktop on X or we can choose the desktop on Wayland. 
It's gonna go ahead and keep it here on X. Go and get signed in with my super secret password that is definitely not one, two, three. And here we land on the desktop. So while this is running GNOME, you'll see that it doesn't really look a lot like GNOME. It's highly customized to look a whole lot like Windows. We do have a few other options if I can remember where exactly to find them, but we do have some theming options in the Zorin appearances menu. So you can pull this guy up. This is your default. We also have more of uh, what would be more called a Redmond layout and older format here, which is going to give us a list of our icons on the bottom. This is generally my preferred. And then you have like a Mac type feel, which has the icons in the center, not exactly the way that Mac runs, but a little bit closer. So you can see that we have a lot of the, the features and, and things in here. Within this, you can set your different desktop icons the way that you might want them to have. You can set your title buttons left or right, enabling the animations. We also have the ability to easily select your, um, your icons here. So we can choose the dark mode. We can choose the light mode with our particular accent color we are interested in. And this mode over here, you can do sunset to sunrise, which is going to require you to turn on location services which basically is just pinging to find when's the sunrise and sunset. And then during the day, it's going to give you the light mode, the dark, it's going to give you the dark mode. Or you can go ahead and set it to manual and you can tell it when to go light mode, when to go dark mode. And then here's just some other options that we have. So we do have a lot more theming options available inside of Zorin to really make the, make the system your own. Let me go ahead and uh, turn this guy back to... Uh, what we had uh, actually we'll we'll go with this middle layout here here which is kind of more of more of my favorite so over here you can see the applications on uh, uh, on the default here uh, head on over here here's your games just a couple in there here's your accessories nothing like nothing too over the top on accessories but we do actually have enough accessories here that uh, it, it feels like it, it has some extra functionality. So overall, the, the application choices are going to be fairly similar on these guys out of the box. How about extra software? Well, Zorin, being based on Ubuntu, uses the apt software system. So if you want to boot up a terminal, you can go ahead and uh, sudo apt, however, and blah, 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 blah. We also have out of the box, we have the GNOME Software Center over here. And your GNOME Software Center already is configured to work with your, um, uh, with your Snap packages. So I did double check if is this the Snap Store or the GNOME Software Store, and I believe it is the GNOME Software Store. But let's just go ahead and look for Caden Live here. And if you look for Caden Live, we have two options, and one of these is the Snap Store Caden Live. And the other one, I believe, will be the Ubuntu repository. So you can see it's the Ubuntu repository one. And so that's what we have. We don't have Snap and configured. If you do want to use Snap on this, it's very easy. Just install, uh, excuse me, if you want to use Flatpak on this, it's easy. Just install Flatpak, install the Flatpak software, uh, GNOME Software Center um, um, uh, plug in and then add FlatHub repository, update your system, and then it will appear in here. So you'll have a good GUI way to manage your flat packs. Out of the box, it does not have that, but uh, that's actually what you have. As far as, as other things, the, the software is going to be everything inside the Ubuntu repositories and the Snap repositories. So we do have a wide variety of software. And uh, the last thing is we'll just go ahead and have a brief look at our system monitor. Because it runs on GNOME, it should be a little bit more heavy than Budgie, which does run a little bit lighter last time I checked. So you can see this guy is running on 1.4 gig of RAM, which is pretty heavy right now, even for a Linux system. You can, of course, uh, as we said, go back to the, the uh, XFCE, the Zorin Lite, 
and that will work out well. Overall though, Zorin is really good for people who like the Ubuntu base but don't want to use Ubuntu specifically. You want to have more control over your, your look and your feel and you want to have a wider array of applications. With that, we'll go ahead and have a look at what Solace has to offer next. So here we are on the Solace login screen and uh, we're going to come down here, enter my super secret password, get our, go ahead and get ourselves logged in here. And over here on Budgie we're, and with Solace, well first let's go ahead and talk about a couple of the little things in Solace that have been a little bit distasteful. Some people have had some issues with the Solace team. Sometimes the Solace team seem to have it out for certain applications like uh, LibHandy. If I remember correctly, I believe LibHandy is a uh, like a, a GNOME... Um, a gnome package needed for some of the tablet and uh, mobile type support and they're like well we're not doing anything with that so we won't even bother shipping it and then that starts to break some packages since solace is its own unique linux distribution they have curated all of the software available for it and it is very limited compared to other distributions we do however have a number of software packages it's not like you're going to be you're going to be out for the major packages that are out there like GIMP or LibreOffice or things like that. Those are all available and I believe many of them um, may even be installed by default. Just have a brief look. We don't have GIMP on there. We do have LibreOffice on there. And you can see it's not it's not like completely lacking in system resources. We do actually have two settings managers. We have the Budgie desktop settings for which manage your themes and we will have another settings panel as well for some of the more um, gnome type setups let's go ahead and have a look at our uh, system resources here while we're at it so we're running on eh, about 400 megabytes less over here still a gig still fairly heavy but not all that bad but here's with our software center. We do have a nice software center. It is nice, it is clean. We also have some third-party applications that you can install. We have Android Studio, you know, there's NPass Password Manager. Here's Chrome, Chrome Beta, Chrome Dev, Google Earth, a lot of Google stuff. We have uh, InSync, not to be mistaken with a bad, uh, bad 90s band. You see there's a lot of these third-party applications that uh, are a little bit harder to find in some other, some other platforms. Out of the box, we do have Snap and Flatpak configured, although we don't have any way to manage those in the GUI. With the Snap, at least you can install the Snap Store because that's a Snap package itself and you can go ahead and get a GUI for that, but you're pretty much out of luck on the, um, uh, on the Flatpak GUI because I'm, last time I checked, I believe that the GNOME Software Center is not even available on Solace, which means that you can't even use the Flatpak plugin for that and have a GUI, so you will be stuck managing your Flatpaks with the terminal. Most of you guys may not care about that, but some of you guys may be like, eh, terminal, keep away. Now, because it is its own thing, it does use its own package manager, and that is called EOPack. So it's actually fairly easy to use if you can use apt or if you can use DNF. It's much the same, closer to DNF. It's just uh, sudo EOPackage install and EOPackage upgrade. You know, very simple stuff. It's its own little thing. We already talked about the fact that it has a few extra desktop environments than Zorin has, although all of those desktop environments are gonna be closer to the vanilla, whereas Zorin highly customizes them to make it all look like a standard, uh, a standard um, computer. As far as other features inside of Solace, really it, its biggest selling point is that it, it works well, it has a very nice uh, UI with the Solace, um, uh, the Budgie desktop environment. I really think it's a very nice, very modern desktop environment. As far as your customization that it's going to have, we don't have, um, uh, here you can see there's a settings and then there's a Budgie desktop settings. The Budgie desktop settings is going to change your your basic look and feel. So we have a, a few different options as far as where our um, uh, as far as where our theming is going to go, but we don't have quite the uh, we we don't have the highlight colors and all of the other options that we have inside of 
uh, inside of uh, of Zorin. So you can kind of see here's a light theme, dark theme option. We have animations or no animations. There are a lot of extra fun options. We can turn on or turn off desktop icons very easily. That's something a lot of people like. I love desktop icons and GNOME is moving without them. Solus is keeping those going forward. So that's really what makes um, what makes uh, Solus so compelling is it's its own thing. It works a lot faster. You're not going to find abandoned stuff in the software repositories, but you might be missing some software, like, for example, Veracrypt. If you want to use Veracrypt, you're like, oh, well, you know, you could just use Lux. Well, you might have a reason to use Veracrypt, such as you have to transfer things back and forth between, you know, Windows, Mac, or Linux, and you're not going to get that working over here. And there's going to be a few other applications that will not work. So with that, uh, we had a look The the software installer is nice. We, we have a nice custom software installer and uh, we have some third party options. We can install a fair amount of software. Your, your basic Linux user is not going to be out of luck running this. If you do need some form of mobile support things with libhandy, you're not going to get that either. So really, that's kind of where we're at. Looking at the two of them, which one's better? Well... It's going to kind of depend on what type of user you are. If you happen to be a user that, that really needs a lot of packages, more obscure things, more uh, just more feature rich, Zorin between these two is going to be a little bit better of an option. If you don't want the bloat, if you don't want to use GNOME, if you just kind of need a, a, a few very distinct applications, Solus might be a little bit better of an option. Overall, it works very well. It is quite a bit faster. It even feels it feels snappier than um, than Zorin does. Solus also is not necessarily engaged in any uh, data collection that I'm aware of. That Zorin um, does actually have some data collection. That they, they did take it. You know, they did make it opt. You know, opt out. But hey, Solus has never actually jumped out and 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 decided to do that. Flat packs and snaps are supported by both of the systems. We will have GUI options for those inside of Zorin, whereas um, Solace, you're going to have to manage those with the terminal, except for snaps when you can install the snap store. So those are kind of your comparisons. Which one's better? Which one's worse? Overall, I think Zorin does give us a lot better options. I do love Budgie. I like what Solace has done. And I do love it when distributions come out and make their own path rather than jumping onto Ubuntu. So those are the things Solace is moving towards better. However, Zorin overall is going to be a better overall package between these two if you're talking about a new user customizability, availability of software packages, and ease of use. Those are my thoughts on these two desktop environments and, and distributions, rather. Let me know your thoughts about these guys in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.